Welcome, folks. Welcome to Navigating Cross-SIG Collaborations with SIG Docs. Uh, my name is Ray Lahano. Uh, I'm a solutions architect. Uh, we, yeah, we did. <laughs> I'm a solutions architect with Red Hat. Um, I'm one of the SIG Docs co-chairs as well. I also work with SIG Security. I'm a sub-project lead for SIG Security leading the external uh, audit sub-project. I've also been uh, a release lead under SIG Release as well. I'm uh, Xander Drabinsky. I'm a uh, tech lead with SIG Docs. Um, in the past, I uh, did a fair bit of work with SIG Release as well, was the 127 release lead, um, and then also served on the Kubernetes Code of Conduct Committee, um, and for employment, do nothing. So yeah, mostly, mostly open source stuff at the moment. Hi, everyone. I'm Savita Raghunathan. I am a contributor to Kubernetes for the past five years. I started my contributions uh, with SIG Docs, and then I moved on to release. I led the release for 1.22, and then currently I am a sub-project lead for SIG security um, documentation. And being here feels like a cycle, full cycle, you know, that's where I started. I'm so glad to be here. And I am going to pass it on to Divya. And thank you. I am Divya Mohan, and um, I work at SUSE uh, as part of my day job. And outside of that, I also uh, contribute to Kubernetes and uh, a bunch of other open source uh, stuff. But specific to Kubernetes, I've uh, been a part of the release team, just like the other folks on the uh, on the stock. And uh, I'm currently co-chairing the documentation along with Ray and Natalie, who's not here. Uh, um, and you know, we manage the whole. Uh, documentation that is visible on kubernetes.io. So now let's hope that this is working fine. Okay. So we have a, a packed agenda to get through today. So I'm going to quickly <laughs> go through that. Um, first up, we're going to look at the uh, way the Kubernetes um, community is structured, um, not just on GitHub, but in general. So uh, that's just going to be a brief overview. But um, after that, we're going to dive deeper into how um, SIG Docs is structured um, and the content on SIG Docs, um, not SIG Docs, on the content of the Kubernetes website is structured. And uh, we'll learn a little more about how it gets updated. Um, and that gives us a natural segue into how we collaborate with the release team. Because releases are those um, you know, periods in time where we have to actually update docs, right? Uh, you have to go through the process of updating your reference docs, your um, uh, you know, in your normal docs, etc. So that's the that's the next thing, and then uh, we'll delve a little more into how we. Uh, you know, build that rapport amongst us and the release team. And uh, then we'll finally look at uh, this. OK, that is on the next slide, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll finally look at uh, the SIG security uh, collaboration aspect, wherein we'll uh, learn how we collaborate on maintaining and uh, creating new documentation around uh, you know specific aspects of uh, security in Kubernetes. And uh, lastly, we'll look at how uh, you can get involved if you wish to. So without further ado, uh, just jumping right into the Kubernetes uh, um, you know, community structure. So um, the community in itself has um, been divided into a number of subgroups. Uh, 24 SIGs as of today, if I'm not wrong, so please correct me if I am, but uh, 24 special interest groups. And uh, uh, if you know uh, there's a specific focus area within the special interest group, say, uh, like within security, there was a requirement for a greater focus on the documentation aspect. So you will have like a sub-project area as well. Within docs, also, we have multiple sub-projects, like uh, the reference docs, the blogs, the localization, uh, etc. So those are like specific focus areas within the uh, you know pro, uh, within the sig itself and then we have working groups and uh, all together i think um, we that is uh, you know those are the, like the working aspects but then we also have like governance committees like zander mentioned the code of conduct committee and we also have an overarching steering committee that's responsible for steering stuff within <laughs> kubernetes so um, if you're looking at like 
for a more graphical overview, this is what it could kind of look like. And when we're talking about uh, documentation, it's one of the 24 groups um, that I mentioned before under uh, special interest groups. We focus on uh, creating, maintaining, and updating documentation for the whole project. Uh, with that, I think, uh, Ray, over to you um, to talk about the documentation uh, SIG specifically. Yeah. So since this talk is about SIG docs, and SIG docs is known uh, about or to publish the upstream Kubernetes documentation, uh, and we're in 16 languages. So uh, behind SIG docs is a large group of folks around the world that works on upstream documentation. Uh, we are divided into uh, four different subprojects: the website itself, uh, blogs, uh, reference docs that Xander's going to talk about, and localization. Uh, because of our great global efforts, uh, the Kubernetes documentation is now available in 16 languages, and there's always more in the works as well. Uh, we do have a tech stack, and we have great tech leads along with Xander, uh, Kat, and Chiming as well. Uh, and so we, so Kubernetes.io is a static site, so everything is in Markdown. Uh, so we, everything is also stored on GitHub. It's on github.com uh, slash Kubernetes slash website. Our platform is Netlify, and that builds from GitHub. Our, uh, the framework is Yugo, uh, and our theme from, for Yugo is Doxy, which is uh, very specific for tech docs as well. We do use the, CI, the same CI, CI CD system Kubernetes uses, which is Prowl, uh, and to dynamically generate uh, charts as well and graphs, we use mermaid.js. And like I mentioned before, everything is on GitHub. So about the Kubernetes website on Kubernetes.io, uh, it is organized in four main areas. Uh, first is concepts. So if you want to dive deep into learning how Kubernetes works, uh, all the different like worker nodes, or all, sorry, all the different node types, like worker and control plane, and all, the, all, the, all their different components as well, you would go to concepts. If you want to do uh, and start to learn about single tasks, like how to configure a pod, or how to uh, configure a config map or secret, it would go to task. And for more in-depth uh, tutorials, there is the obvious tutorial section as well, and it will uh, talk about a, a walk through how to accomplish, accomplish a goal. So it was, so it, they will actually use an application container image as well so that you would deploy uh, for different purposes. So one could be a messaging queue or it could be a simple uh, ZooBooker uh, application. Lastly, we have a reference uh, where we, we do keep a glossary and we have reference guides as well that's generated, which uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. So I'll go high level on how we go from a pull request to publishing on to Netlify to update the website. Uh, so first, uh, a contributor uh, could be anyone, could be anyone not in the Kubernetes org. We welcome uh, any folks that want to contribute to Kubernetes. Uh, so if they want to uh, fix any typos, fix any updated links, or create or talk or create uh, update docs about uh, new features, updated features, uh, they would make a pull request. The Netlify is aware uh, of those GitHub changes, and so, so Netlify will actually uh, create and build a preview of the, what those changes would be on a whole different site. So it'll be a separate, uh, we call it deploy preview site, and it'll be actually the full website, full documentation website, just on its own. Uh, so we could preview the changes. Uh, we do have, we, we do require reviews, of course, for our pull requests. Uh, so if you are a Kubernetes org member, uh, they can apply an LGTM or looks good to me label uh, onto the pull request, or they can review it and, this, and then ask for any changes, make any comments, uh, make any suggestions on the pull request. Once you're satisfied, then they can apply that LGTM label. But we do also welcome uh, informal reviews as well from anyone in the community. And uh, someone with an approver status, once uh, folks have climbed the contributor ladder, gone from uh, reviewer to approver, uh, they, can all, they will also review the pull requests, and once they are satisfied, they can also make some requests as well for some changes, make, make some suggestions, and they will finally uh, give an approved uh, label as well. And once an LGTM and approved label uh, are there, uh, their CI-CD system, Proud, will kick in and check to make sure, first the CLA is signed, of course, and make sure there's the LGTM and approved label. 
as well. Then it's okay to merge. Then it's gonna merge into, into the main branch, uh, and it's merged, and Netlify is, uh, knows about the merge, and Netlify will, uh, will build the site again and deploy it. So every PR that is merged in GitHub, Netlify will also build a site. Also, when any pull request is made to, uh, to our GitHub repo, Netlify will also build a preview site. So next I'll pass it on to Xander, talk about collaborating with SIG release. Yeah, so this section is gonna kinda get into, uh, or it's the beginning of um, what was the, the title of the talk, and talking about uh, cross-SIG collaboration, and that ends up being a pretty important thing for docs. Um, and uh, SIG release is kind of important to us, especially because all four of us um, were heavily involved in SIG release. Um, I began my journey there as a contributor, and I think several of us Same. did. Um, so um, I think it helps to have just a little bit of context on how the release team works um, and, and how they you know, ship Kubernetes releases. Um, those are happening three times a year now over 15-week cycles. Um, and throughout this cycle, the uh, release team is working pretty heavily with SIG docs to ensure that documentation is getting created for the features that are involved in a Kubernetes release. And uh, I think that has really increased throughout the last couple releases. Um, there always has been a doc sub team on the release team, but um, over the last two to three release cycles, it's become a tighter collaboration where each um, uh, SIG docs meeting, we aim to have a representative from the release team present to give an update to ensure that by the time the release ships, the documentation is in as strong a place as we can be. Um, I know that like documentation isn't the most exciting subject uh, given the size of the crowd, right? Like it's, it's not that interesting, but like when documentation is like missing or not up to a, a high standard, we do actually hear about it. Like people are upset and like frustrated by that lacking. Um, so here's a little bit more on how the release team is structured. Um, this is actually just a quick side. You can see the various sub roles that that comprises with the, the docs lead and doc shadows being a core part of that release team. Um, so what they do on the release team as a doc sub team is they are ensuring that each feature that is present in a Kubernetes release is properly documented and that it is hitting correct milestones throughout the release. So at a certain time checkpoint in the release, they need to have a PR open um, and you know it's it's a blank PR. At a certain point, they need to have some doc content there, and then by the time we're getting near the end of the release, the full documentation needs to be in place, and then it needs to merge by a certain date. In addition to that, they are maintaining the development branch, and so keeping the dev branch in sync with the main branch and keeping that up to date throughout the release process. And then reference docs. Uh, this is, yeah, this is something. Um, so this is the part on the website that hosts all of the API documentation for Kubernetes. This is maybe something that some of you have used before. Um, I have always found it especially useful. Um, this is generated from the API spec um, that gets updated with each Kubernetes release. In the past, this was something that release team members generated at the end of release. Um, these days, uh, one of the tech leads will step in and, and do this generation. Um, it's something that can take a few days because it is a complex process. Uh, this code base is, um, is challenging um, and it's, it's difficult to maintain. Um, and so I, I bring this up because it's one way that if you are looking to get involved in SIG docs and you know how to write Go or Python, um, and uh, yeah, looking for something to contribute to, this is something that we really could use some help with. Um, we wanna get this project up to a modern standard. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a cry for help, but uh, also, you know, just rah rah open source, c come help us, um, yeah. Um, we also do a fair bit of work with the comms release team here. 
um, and they are responsible for the release blog and all feature blogs that get published at the end of the release cycle. Um, and we end up working pretty closely with them because that all is going to go live on the Kubernetes.io website that is maintained by the SIG Docs team. Um, and so we also end up coordinating release-related webinars and press interviews and such. Um, yeah, and it's, it's important because, you know, there's a lot of coordination that is involved in making sure that those publishing dates are set up ahead of time and that all of that is able to go live right when it's intended to and in the correct order. And, yeah. All right, I will pass it on to Savitha to talk about collaborating with SIG Security. Thank you, Xander. So let's see how SIG Security Documentation Project collaborates with SIG Documentation. So what do we do? Um, we aim to enrich the current Kubernetes website with updated security content. What that means is keeping up, um, keeping the content uh, relevant with respect to security and updating the examples so that they are secure by default. Um, I have been there where I have just copy pasted the example into production. So if you're like me, <laughs> we are trying to do a little bit better um, one step at a time um, to make this uh, the examples uh, secure. And you can build on top of it. It's not 100% secure, so just don't take it by face value. It is a building step, stepping stone for you to build and add more security features uh, with respect to your production environment. And we also add new content. We add concepts, uh, we add tutorials, we also add new examples and blogs. Um, and uh, to give a little bit of historical context on this project, this used to be a part of SIG documentation, um, I think four or five years ago. And then that time SIG security was not uh, formed. We formed the group three years ago. Um, and we rehomed this project to the SIG security because it was a better fit there. And we work very closely with uh, every SIG, especially with SIG documentation and getting all the content merged. Um, we have made a lot of contributions so far. Um, when I say a lot, it's not in the quantity. I think it's in the quality. So we have tried to add uh, sections of hardening guide. These uh, sections go deeper into topics like authorization, authentication, scheduler configuration, and et cetera. We also have a baseline checklist, a security checklist for administrators and application developers whenever they are deploying a Kubernetes cluster or whenever they are writing an application to be deployed on Kubernetes, they can just go to this one pager and see if they are checking the uh, minimal requirements to make it more secure. Um, it's easy to print, and uh, we are constantly updating it. So if you are ever at that page and you think we are missing something, please create an issue. Um, and if you are interested, you can also create a PR. We welcome all kinds of contributions. We also work on blogs. There are uh, some of the blogs that we have published on confidential computing. We have published blogs on a review of NSA, CISA, Hardening Guide, and RBAC, and many more. So we welcome blogs uh, if you have anything that you want to add on the uh, topic of Kubernetes and security. And no, th no third party software, please. <laughs> Um, so this is just to give a glimpse of uh, what we have done, what, what's in flight. Um, these are large-scale efforts. Sometimes it takes over an year. When I say it actually takes over an year, we just merged one of the PRs uh, for application checklist. Um, I met this contributor last KubeCon and at uh, KubeCon at Chicago last time, I think. Um, so I met him there, and he was interested, and he started contributing. Uh, he wrote this amazing application checklist that we marched recently, and it had a back and forth reviews. I think it would have had at least 200 comments or so, and we recently marched it. So I hope it is useful for everyone. Um, it is definitely useful for me whenever I'm just uh, checking things to deploy stuff. Um, we also, uh, now I want to talk about how we actually collaborate with uh, SIG documentation. So every issue comes in, um, every, every enhancement bug, um, any feature comes in the form of um, an issue. 
and we have two places to track the main, um, the project level ideas um, and tutorials and stuff like that gets tracked in the SIG security repo. And there is also this uh, Kubernetes website. That's where majority of our issues come through. And whenever an issue is created by a uh, person who is using the uh, documentation, and kudos to the docs team, they make it amazing. So if you go to the website and if you see something is missing or something is misrepresented or out of date or uh, you would like to see something, you can always go to the lower bottom, it says report an issue. When you click on that link, it directly takes you to the website issues. So you can just fill out the form and you're done, voila. There you made your first contribution. Um, so. We get a lot of issues that way, and the docs team actually triage them and assign it to SIG security, and they also reach out to us via Slack channel if it is important or if, if, we, if, if it needs, requires extra set of eyes. And um, the next step is PR reviews. They also help us a lot with the PR reviews. Uh, any security, uh, any security-related documentation PR requires two sets of reviews. One is a technical review to make sure that the content is technically accurate. That comes from the area on which um, the content is related to. For example, there is an RBAC-related PR. SIG author. Uh, put their um, review, LGTM, if it looks good to them, and then it'll come from SIG security. And then the doc, SIG docs people actually help us to make sure the content adheres to the style guide guidelines. Uh, style, style guide guidelines, yes. Yes, <laughs> it seems like guide guide. Okay, style uh, guide guidelines, and they also help us uh, make sure it's like grammatically correct, and it is simple English, so that it's consumable by everyone in the world. Um, so to make it accessible, and uh, they also help us in getting the document, uh, the PR merch, so that's available on the website. They also help us with, help us with the content uh, organization. For example, if we are putting up a new um, PR on something like um, authentication or uh, some some other security related topic, they will see they will help us find the right place to actually merge the content. For example, it could be a concept, it could be a tutorial, it could be like anywhere else. We have a current discussion that's going on where to move the security checklist to. Should we keep it in the concepts or should we keep it in best practices, you know, so that it's accessible, available, someone can search it and find it in the right location. Um, yes. So if you are interested in learning more about SIG security documentation, there is a link up there in one of the slides. And I'm going to pass it on to Divya to talk more about how you can get involved with the SIG documentation project. Thank you. So uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, the first call to action would probably be uh, you know, uh, joining the Kubernetes Slack. The reason is be mostly hang out there. Everyone in the Kubernetes community is a part of that. Um, but um, if you are a fan of meetings um, and would like to attend more meetings, um, we also have that for you. Um, uh, we basically meet um, fortnightly um, for um, you know the SIG docs, but the whole SIG as a pro sub uh, subgroup, but uh, we also have specific uh, sub project meetings um, held on a more um, um, how do I say it uh, on a monthly cadence. Let's put it that way. So we have those uh, meetings as well. And if you're from the APAC time zone like me. Uh, it's difficult to join meetings at uh, the time that is normally listed there because it's normally midnight uh, when I have to join these meetings. So we have an APAC-friendly time zone meeting as well um, for um, on a monthly basis. And um, if you know you're absolutely intimidated by the amount of information that you just saw, uh, we also have a new contributor meet and greet, uh, which gets held on the first Tuesday of every month. And uh, that is in a very uh, EU and uh, APAC friendly time zone, but not so friendly for the American ones, but uh, we're trying to fix that. So uh, that's another avenue. But uh, 
to get meeting invites for all of these, um, uh, the best way would be to actually just subscribe to the mailing list. So these are all hyperlinked, and the slides will be available after the session on shared. So you can directly uh, click them and get invited to the mailing list and subscribe to the uh, calendar invites. But uh, all of these are avenues to get in touch with us. But uh, if you're not a fan of meetings or even Slack channels, uh, that's completely fine. Um, you can, you know, as a consumer of the documentation, if you're seeing a typo, you're seeing a, um, a sentence that can be phrased better, uh, that would be completely OK as an issue to us as well. Like, if you're able to file an issue, just like I think Savita or Xander or Ray, I don't know who of them, uh, who mentioned this, uh, filing an issue in itself would also be a contribution because it helps us know that you know some consumers are not able to find the documentation as accessible as we find it. And um, of course, uh, PRs uh, to fix that issue would also be welcome because clearly, uh, as you can see, we are issuing a call for help. Uh, so PRs to fix uh, issues are always welcome, and uh, they'll go through the process that Ray outlined. Uh, but this is just to say that uh, you know the only way to get started is to actually you know consume the documentation. It's really, really just that, and let us know if you know we can make it better for you. Um, and uh, yeah, that's probably it. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, we are happy to take them now. Um, I don't know how much time we have left, though. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we have about five minutes. Oh, OK. We have five minutes. So if you have any questions, we're happy to take them. But if not, you are camera shy. You can catch us later. That's also fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay. So, so you have issue and PR regulars. Yeah. When, when do you populate that? Um, that <clears throat> that's on an annual basis. So that's a very good question. So the question was, uh, we have issue and PR wranglers. Uh, so for those of you who are unaware of what those terms mean, as alien as they might sound, they're basically the uh, people who are going to review your issues and PRs on a weekly basis. So as the year ends, it's uh, one of the duties that we undertake um, before Christmas sets in before the Christmas fever sets in to actually have a rota put out for issue and PR wrangling so that when you know we enter the new year, <laughs> we have an adequate amount of uh, people staffed for those roles. And it's not like we've just gone into the holiday season and been in a limbo for all that while. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. I want to add to that as well. We also have a PR wrangler shadow program as well. Yeah. Where uh, folks who want to learn how to review PRs, uh, they could sign up as well. Like uh, my every PR wrangler, every approver, it's a little different how they and uh, how they mentor a shadow. I like to do a short one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with them at the beginning of the week, show them uh, how I review uh, pull requests. And we have a, some pages on Kubernetes.io on how to review pull requests as well. I show them, uh, walk through a few reviews I do, uh, touch base throughout the week a little bit, and then at the end of the week as well, I'd like to touch base at the final at the end of the week just to see how, if they have any questions, they can also feel free to ping me as well and also send me any uh, questions on any specific pull requests or any comments that they would like to make or they have made, they can send that to me over Slack uh, async as well. Yeah, any other questions? OK, then. Uh, we'll see you on the hallway track if you have any. But for that, thank you. Thank you for being a patient audience. Thank you.